It was a telemarketer call. I accept that. But that was the day that I learned that Joey had chosen to stay. It suddenly hit me that he had a choice. When he left his body, when he left, when he decided to no longer use this his costume, in spirit, he took off. And his father greeted him, and he went to a higher level of perspective. He could have chosen to start his heart up again. He could have chosen to say, I'm going to come back because I want to. That was the day I realized that my guilt was finally gone. That I had no control over his choice. He chose to stay. He could have come back. He could have... We have the power to, we do, if that woman in the morgue had the, or going down to the morgue had the power to bring herself back into her body, Joy had the power to do it too. We're, we are that magnificent. Um, one of the things Ellen Dye told me when she was shoved back into her body was this, like, we're, we're magnificent human beings, okay? We're more magnificent than people realize. She said, it's like trying to shove an elephant into a Coke can. I mean, we're that big. We're, we are divine. And this is just a small portion of us, this pretend person I am. So if we're that powerful and divine and magnificent, spiritual beings having a human experience, as you see on so many pages, um, Joey had the choice. He had the choice to come back. He didn't want to. That was his choice. It wasn't my choice. And how arrogant of me to think that I could control the choice of any of my children and their choices in this journey that they're on. It's their journey, not mine. It's their journey. It's their choice. It's their choice to work the jobs they work. It's their choice to, if they leave the body, to stay or co come back. They're, they wrote their own scripts. And it was arrogant, egoic conditioning that the guilt was in there. And that was the day that the guilt finally fled. That was it. That was the day the guilt finally fled. Now Joey, another person he came to that I was so amazed by, um, and this is the Monroe Institute. I, I guess going to the Monroe Institute was when I finally said to myself, okay, there's no death, but how do I talk to my son? And someone at the IONS conference said, you know, and I think it was Dr. Eben Alexander was talking about it because I had lunch with this group of famous people. And he said the Monroe Institute he had gone to, and I guess he was executive director at one time there. He said to go there and, and meditate, learn to meditate. Well, I didn't really know I could meditate or whether I could meditate or not meditate. I didn't know. I, I had no idea what it, what it meant. But I thought, well, hell, I'm going to give it a chance, right? So I did. I, uh, I booked a Gateway Voyage session down there. It's in West Virginia. And uh, I decided to go. And I went and uh, walked into a absolutely incredible place. Um, I won't go into full detail. I, all I know is that it's a place where, um, I, I guess a, gr a group of Buddhist monks went there and they said, leave it to an American to invent a tape, a CD or tapes that Ha that offer you a meditative practice that it took takes us 30 years to get to that you can get to in six days. That's how powerful these um, CDs are. They use binaural beats, and um, Robert Monroe discovered this accidentally when he was working 
with radio signals or he was working with frequencies to try to help people um, sleep for sleep deprivation and suddenly he popped out of his body using them at one time and he discovered that they create um, they can create uh, out-of-body experiences and changes in perception so there are four beats per minute and it's no different than shamanic drumming where you go into a trance and you change from alpha wave to beta wave to delta wave, theta, theta wave, delta wave. So you're changing your brain structure and how you perceive consciousness through these CDs and they help you meditate. And I needed help to learn how. And again, when I decided to go to the Monroe Institute, I went there with no expectations. I went there completely saying whatever the, you know, I had now reached a point where I could say whatever the universe, my higher self, whatever happens, happens, and I'm not going in with any expectations. You know, good idea. Because, but, but my next tape, uh, or the next video is about what happened there, and, uh, and, uh, I, I asked for a drink of water when I got there, and I got a fire hose. So that's my next video. I'll go drink some coffee now. Thank you for listening.